We're doing a study on the book of Ecclesiastes. We're calling it How to Live a Happy Life. How to Live a Happy Life. And we're looking at Solomon's conclusions, and he's coming to several of those. If we're going to live a productive life, be successful with our lives, these are the things that we need to do. This particular lesson comes from Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, and I'm going to call it The Portrait of a Fool. The Portrait of a Fool. Now, when you look at Solomon, he's become what we would call the unhappy humanist. In other words, he's tried all these different things to see if he can make a success out of his life, and he's failing miserably. As I said before, he's the king of the kings, and so he's got the money, he's got the resources and the ability, the wisdom God's given him, so he pushes things to the maximum and finds out it's a dead-end street. So he's very unhappy with what he's discovering. He finds that wisdom is a tremendous tool for success. But the problem is, is there are so many foolish people that never learn anything from their experiences in life. They go through it again and again. Have you ever done that? I, I, I can remember, you know, one time realizing, wait a minute, wait a minute, what am I doing here? I know the answer to this problem. I've been through it four times before. Why am I here again? Obviously, because I was not learning from my past experience. And that's what Solomon sees here. He sees all these foolish people, so he begins to examine them. Let's, let's look at four particular categories that he identifies. The first one is the foolish ruler, the foolish ruler. Just because you are in a position of authority doesn't mean that you will be wise. Well, we have seen that, haven't we? And so he deals with these foolish rulers. They're, they're supposed to be smart, and some of them are smart, but they are not wise. They've got plenty of intellect, but... They don't have wisdom. And so here are some of Solomon's observations about foolish rulers. Some of the things that they do that we come to the conclusion, these rulers are not wise. Here's one, and I think a lot of people ought to step back and listen to this one. Foolish rulers shout out their messages because they have little that's worth saying. Wow, I know some people that ought to take that one in and listen to it. The Bible said about Jesus, for instance, and nobody did it any better than Jesus. Nobody was wiser than Jesus. And yet it says of Jesus, he will not lift his voice in the street. Have you ever noticed that when you are losing an argument, you get louder? Why do we do that? Because we, in, we in, uh, realize that I'm losing this argument here. It, it's like the preacher that in his notes, he said, this is a very weak point. Shout very loudly. Because some people don't know the difference between noise and anointing, you know. And so he said, that's the way it is with these foolish rulers. These foolish rulers, because they have little of value to say, they shout their messages out. And yet, Solomon observes, people follow them anyway, while at the same time ignoring the soft-spoken words of the wise. I remember the last presidential election. I won't give any names here. That's not fair. But I remember listening to one of the debates, and I turned to Evelyn, and I said, that would be the man I would vote for right there. He is, he's got wisdom, but he doesn't have the charisma to rally the people because he's too soft-spoken. Boy, that's what Solomon saw. People will ignore the wise words of wisdom because he's not shouting it out. He's just talking about it. Leaders are expected, though, to conduct themselves wisely. And when they fail to do so, it's what he calls, it makes a stink. 
Now, the way he put it, he said it's like dead insects in the perfume bottle. It's going to pollute the perfume and make it smell terrible. And we expect our perfume to smell good. That's why we use it. We don't put it on to smell bad. We smelled bad before we needed the perfume. But he said that we, we use the perfume to make ourselves smell better. And he said, yet we put these people in positions of authority. We expect them to conduct themselves wisely. I remember one of the ladies in the church that we pastored in Ohio one day, she, she said to me, and it was, it was one of the nicest compliments I've ever received. She said, Pastor, you've never embarrassed me. And I realized that's one of the prerequisites of being a good leader is you don't go around embarrassing the people that are following you. Boy, the foolish ruler. The problem for foolishness, the folly, it can be traced back to the problem of the heart. The heart is not right. Something is wrong inside with the person, and that's where the foolishness arises from, is out of the heart. So even the difficult things for a foolish person to make a decision, even the simplest things, they, 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 they can't make up their mind. They can't decide. They're always changing back and forth. They're constantly changing their minds. Well, you would think that Solomon was reading our newspapers, wouldn't you, rather than writing the Bible? Uh, but but it, it's been the problem of humanity all along. And so he said, these people, they, they, they're always changing their minds because they cannot make wise decisions. Then he points out another thing that the foolish rulers do. They place their friends in positions of authority that they are not equipped to handle. They're not prepared to take care of that position. They put them there because it's their friend. It's their buddy. But what happens? Soon the incompetence of the person that they put in that, person, that position of authority reveals the foolishness of the leader that chose them for that position in the first place. Why did you put them in a position they are not qualified to handle? It comes back to you as the leader saying, why did you appoint them? And so th this is a common problem. We see it in our world, don't we? It's all around us. It's a common problem for leaders, and it's what he calls the foolish leader. Now, let, let me talk about a second one that he points out here. This one is the foolish worker. The foolish worker, not just the leader. And he, he gives us five different illustrations of work that people are doing and the danger that comes out of that situation. For instance, he mentions digging pits. Digging pits. What, what's the problem about digging pits? There's the danger that you'll fall into your own pit. There's the danger of that. And so he said, you need to be careful when you're digging pits. It's setting traps for others sometimes backfires. You get caught in your own trap. Uh, he talks then about breaking down walls. And he said the, the problem with breaking down walls is... The serpents love to hide in those rocks and rubble of the broken down wall and there's the danger of you getting bit from the wall that you have broken down. He talks about another problem of cutting stones. He said, you're cutting the stones, but if you're not careful, you will be hurt in the process. Now, all of these are natural illustrations of doing work but the danger that comes from doing that work. Here's, here's another illustration. He talks about splitting logs, cutting down trees. What's the danger? The danger is being hurt by the falling trees or the logs that you are splitting. There's always the danger that is there. And then finally, he gives a fifth illustration of chopping wood, of cutting wood. And he said, the problem is you're dulling your axe and 
you're exhausting yourself. You're wearing yourself out trying to split the wood. Now, he's using nat natural illustrations here, observing that with these opportunities also comes the danger. It's always that way. In every situation, it is that way. It doesn't matter what the decision is, and it's the thing that stops a lot of people from making decisions. They just keep looking at, well, what if I do this, or what if I don't do that? No, wisdom is knowing how to make the right decisions. The foolish person, the foolish person doesn't know which decision to make. And so his conclusion is, wisdom is the biggest difference between success and failure. That's what's going to make the profit in your life. If you're going to be successful with your life, you must learn to be wise in your decisions. If you make foolish decisions, that's going to cost you. It's going to come back to bite you, we say. It, it, it's going to hurt you rather than help you. So wisdom is the big difference here. It's one of the keys to life. If we're going to live a successful life, a happy life, we've got to learn how to make wise decisions. Now the wise worker is one that thinks ahead. And by thinking ahead, they are preparing for the difficulties of this life. He realizes Okay, here's what can happen if we do this. I, I, I do a lot of mentoring and training young pastors and young preachers. And, and as I, I take them with me, I first take them and let them watch me do it. Then I let them help me do it. Then I switch roles and now I'm helping them do it. And finally I back off and say, okay, you can handle this. Now, what I've discovered in that, first of all, you tell them what to do what to do, and then how to do it. You give them that information. But the third question is one of the biggest questions that they're going to face. That is, why did we do that? And what I will do is sit them down and do an evaluation after whatever the project is, whatever we have done. And uh, I'll sit them down and I'll ask them some questions like, what's the best thing that happened? And uh, what, what's the the worst thing that happened, and then what could we have done that would have made a difference? In other words, turn it into a learning experience. And it, it, as they mature, I start asking them these why questions. Why did I do this at this particular time? And they're trying to figure that out, and I'll point out some of the reasons why I did it. And then I will say, now, if I had done this, then this is what would have happened. And you start teaching them to think that way. Leaders do that. Leaders think ahead. They prepare for the difficult things. And so Solomon says, thoughtfulness brings a success on a level that is not possible by brute strength. Just brute strength alone is not going to produce a success in your life. Why? because you're going to waste some of the best years of your life when your energy has run out. I'll never forget, I was a young preacher in my 30s, and I, I had spoke at this conference, and, and this older pastor, he'd been a pastor for many years, he's now in his upper 60s, and he came to me crying, and he said, that was a great sermon, that was a very good sermon. And then he, he crying, and he said, I never developed my mind. My ministry was only with my hands, what I could do with my hands, but I never developed my mind. And now I've reached physically the age where I cannot physically do it anymore. And so my ministry is over. Boy, I, I'm so glad that he came and talked to me because here I am, a young man, still in you know my prime of life and energy. But the truth is, one day, the brute strength will run out. And if you don't have it up here, you don't know the ability to share it with somebody else, the opportunity to make a success with your life just ended. Now, here's the third one that Solomon talks about. He talks about the foolish talker. 
the foolish talker. He said, there is nothing that reveals the fool more quickly than his words. Boy, that is the truth, isn't it? Oh, in fact, in the book of Proverbs, he, he says a lot about this. A fool is known by his much speaking. You know, he, 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 these are some of his wise proverbs that he passes on. And it is so true. The foolish talker, he's always talking, but the more he talks, the less he says. Now, haven't you known people like that that you, you just wish they would hush because, you know, they're not saying anything. They're just talking. And what Solomon points out, Solomon says, he's destroying himself with his own mouth. Boy, that's setting a trap, isn't it? The mouth trap. Boy, that's, that's one of the big ones, the mouth trap. And he's destroying it. See, we never know what he's going to say next, what he's going to do next. He, he, he's like we call the loose cannon. You don't know which direction he will fire the next time, you know. Uh, but you know he's going to be firing at somebody. We never know what he's going to do next. And yet, you can't tell him anything because he thinks he knows everything. Boy, he's what we call the know-it-all. And the truth is, none of us know it all. That's why God gave us two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionately. That's wisdom. Listen before you speak. But the foolish talker, and then Solomon says something again. This is, you see his humor that's coming through here. He says, he thinks he knows it all, that he's so smart, but the truth is, he can't even find his way back to town. In other words, he's lost and he doesn't even know it. Boy, have you known people like that? Those are not enjoyable experiences, are they? To be around people that they just talk incessantly. They never stop talking and yet the more they talk, the less they say and you just want to get away from it all. Solomon says, the foolish man is confused, he's weary, and he's empty. And then again, he inserts some of his humor and he says, he's talked so much that he's worn himself out. And I would add, and everybody that was around him, nobody wants to hear it anymore. They're just glad when, it's like I was reading the book of Job and you come to the end of that 31st chapter and it said, and the words of Job have ended. And you say, thank God. I never thought you would stop talking. And, but that, that's the foolish person that just keeps on, keeps on. Oh, don't, don't be that way, friend. You're not going to make a profit with your life that way. You just wear yourself out and you make everybody else around you miserable. So that is not a good way to live. One other thing that I would say concerning this, ignorance can be educated. Just because you don't know, that, that, that's, that's not the problem. The problem is when ignorance thinks it's wise. That's the height of stupidity. When you think you already know it. Have you ever seen people like that? Boy, I have. I've had to deal with them. That, and uh, I try to get that over as quickly as I can because I realize this is going nowhere. Because they're not listening. The very moment you bring up anything, they know more about it than you do. They, they, they want to tell you everything. And when you think you know it all, all you're doing is revealing your ignorance. So ignorance is not the problem. You can find knowledge. You can find people that can help you. The problem is foolishness. Foolishness. Because you already think that you know it all. Now let me talk about the fourth area. The fourth area that he describes here as foolishness is what I would call the foolish officials. These officers in positions of authority. When you put people in positions of authority that are immature, there's the key word, immature, they always cause problems, always. They're, they're over their head and yet they think they know what they're doing. And they don't know what they're doing. They're just creating more problems is all. When those in authority are immature, boy, 
This is one of the big dangers in every society. It's why we always have to be training the next generation because they're going to be facing the challenges of tomorrow. And if they're put in positions of authority that they're not capable to handle, they're incompetent to handle, they're going to reveal our weakness. We did not properly train them. We did not prepare them. So immature leaders. He, he points out here that one of the big mistakes that immature leaders make is they begin to live like life is a big party. They act like I'm put in this position of authority so I can have a good time. I can have more money to spend on myself. And he said, that is a sure sign of immaturity. He said, these people do not know the proper time to celebrate. And he points out, they party in the morning. In the morning, they are celebrating. He said, that's the wrong time. Why? Because in the morning is when you need to be working. That's when you ought to be your most productive. Celebrate in the evening after you have accomplished something. After you've done a good job, then step back and celebrate. But he said, because these people, they wake up in the morning. They can't wait to begin the party. So they started in the morning. They're staying drunk and their houses are falling into decay. Their world is falling, failing around them. And yet they go on with the party like it will never end. He said, you're not going to make a success with your life doing that. That is a sign of immaturity. In fact, he points out here in Ecclesiastes 10 and 18 that laziness is a sign of foolishness. Boy, that's a potent statement, isn't it? That laziness is the evidence of foolishness. You're wasting your opportunity. You're wasting your, the best time of your life, and you're wasting it. He said, that's a big mistake. Don't do that. And yet, those that are put in position of authority and they're too immature to handle it, they think they can take care of anything. For instance, they think they can buy their way out of trouble. If I get into problems, I'll just spend some money. We'll fix it with problems. You, you, you seen anybody do that? How did it work out? It doesn't work out well at all, does it? No, because all you have done is revealed your foolishness. You cannot buy your way out of trouble. And yet, Solomon said, before you become too critical of these foolish officials, be careful what you say. Be careful, because uh, when you start speaking about foolish leaders there's always going to be somebody that will tell them what you said boy that is the truth isn't it that is the truth there will always be somebody that will report and so his conclusion is why should you get yourself in trouble just because the ruler is a fool that's a good question a good question. We're not going to be productive with our own lives. And so he said, be careful about the way that you talk about these foolish rulers. Now, how can you do that? How do you handle it? It's the word respect. See, even if you cannot respect the person that is in authority, you must show respect for the position that they are in. Boy, those are wise words there. I need to repeat that. Even when we cannot respect the person, we must respect the position. And it, it, it's, uh, his conclusion is, bad government is better than no government at all. And it's true. Because when there's no government, everything breaks down. And it, it, it's lawlessness. And nobody's going to live a productive life then. So he's saying, be careful. Be careful what you say about these foolish rulers. Now, let me close by talking about what he describes as finding wisdom in a foolish world. 
finding wisdom. Where are you going to find wisdom? It begins as Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord, the respect of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. That's where it starts. That's why it said foolishness comes out of the heart. It's a problem with our spirit. Something's wrong inside us. That's why we are foolish. So it begins with our relationship with God. He's coming back to it again. You're not going to make a profit if you leave God out. See, spiritual maturity is no accident. It only comes by obeying God. By learning God's laws, by learning God's ways, by learning God's word, and then bringing your life into harmony with that. That's how you're going to be successful with your life. Or as he's pointing out here, sin is the ultimate folly. Sin leads to death, to destruction. It's the ultimate folly. And so don't go that route. He said it's better for us to learn wisdom. It's better to get wisdom than to get gold. Oh, there are so many people in this United States of America. I wish I could imprint that in their minds in box car letters. It's better to have wisdom than to have gold. You can make so much money that it doesn't make sense. That will not make you wise and it will not make you live a productive life. And so Solomon is bringing us to a conclusion. If we're going to live a productive life, if we're going to live a successful life, this is the way that it must be done. Get wisdom. With all you're getting, get understanding. So I challenge you in your journey of faith, get wisdom, get wisdom, and make a profit with your life.